Babies are very diverse. As you can see, these two babies differ in size. The inheritance of these characteristics is managed by hereditary material known as DNA. This is true for all living organisms, so also for our flowers. When we decode the DNA in a laboratory, we can get an idea of the genetic diversity. That is where I'm heading now. To analyse the DNA, we need only a small piece of the sample. It could even be a few hairs or some skin tissue from a museum specimen or an environmental sample, such as water from the river or soil. Advances in computer technology made DNA analyses faster and cheaper. After getting DNA, we can read out the genetic code of each sample and compare them to find the differences. It takes a lot of expertise to obtain genomic data. We as G-Bikers want to share knowledge and build capacity. We want genetic data to be understandable to conservation managers. How fast does my population lose genetic variation? Is my population large enough to maintain sufficient levels of genetic diversity? The fact that plot C shows less variation is expected given its low population size, known also as census size, N. So the number of individuals can be a good proxy for effective population size, NE. That also takes into account the genetic aspects based on DNA analyses. The loss of genetic diversity is slower in populations with larger effective sizes. A genetically healthy population has a minimum effective size of 500. Even though plots A and B have the same census size, plot A has a higher effective size. So the number of individuals is not always a good proxy to estimate the effective size. Lastly, we must be aware that different populations may have different genetic variants that are also important to be conserved as it may be crucial for species overall survival potential. Thank you, Stork. Now I understand that DNA analyses are important for species conservation. So, if I want to protect all biodiversity, should I continuously do genetic monitoring? Yes, based on years of research, we developed three indicators in order to monitor and conserve as much genetic diversity as possible. First one is the number of existing populations within species that have an effective population size higher than 500 in order to maintain sufficient levels of genetic variation. Second is the ratio of different populations remaining within species because there can be valuable genetic differences between them. The third is the number of populations that are genetically analysed to better estimate the effective population size and assess differences between populations. Using these indicators in conservation efforts would result in more robust and resilient populations.